Are you an aspiring creative in entertainment, business, fashion, design, or the arts? Do you want to elevate your creative passion project to the next level? Then this show is for you. Whether you want a career in television, film, radio, literature, music, or beyond, Creative Breakthrough will show you how to take your dreams and turn them into reality. This show will not only leave you feeling motivated and inspired, but also provide you real-life tools to pursue the creative journey you have always wanted. I'm your host, creative coach, and chicken wing lover, Shireen Kassab, a.k.a. The Funny Brown Girl. Yes, I have an unhealthy obsession with chicken wings. Now, get ready to flex your creative muscle. Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Creative Breakthrough. I am your host, Shireen Kassam. I want to start off by saying thank you for listening to this podcast. Thank you for all the emails that you've been sending me. Thank you for writing reviews. And thank you for sharing this podcast with friends and family that you believe will find this useful. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Before I start, I just want to give a quick shout out to Australia. I see you listening to this podcast. Thank you so much. Today, I want to do a part two of an episode I did a couple of weeks ago called Work-Life Balance. Today, I want to talk about time management. A couple of you emailed me and said you understood what I was talking about in the Work-Life Balance episode, but you wanted to take it one step further. You wanted to understand, okay, how do you actually find the time? Once you find the balance in your life, where do you find the time to actually pursue your passion projects? And I get this a lot. A lot of people will always say to me, oh my God, Shireen, where do you find the time to do everything that you do? And they're even more shocked when I tell them I actually still have my full-time job and I do everything outside of work. So I'm going to give you the five tips I use to manage my time. The first tip I have that really works for me and I think is super important is being passionate. Be passionate about what you're spending your time on. If you're excited about it, you'll make time for it. I talked about in the work-life balance episode where you have to remove things from your life that you don't care about. Remove people, remove toxic behaviors, remove things that you've said yes to and say no. Say no if it's not going to make you happy or fulfill you. And it's about being selfish. It's about being selfish with your time and your energy because you're really important and your goals are important. So don't let someone else sidetrack you. Get rid of all the drama. Get rid of the negativity. Get rid of the toxicity. Number two, Set your daily, weekly, and monthly goals. I know it can be really hard to set daily goals, but definitely try to set weekly and monthly goals. I use a passion planner. It is a journal that I have bought, and I actually got it from Amazon. To find it, just go to funnybrowngirl.com forward slash passion planner, and you'll see what I'm using. And it's really great because it has a monthly view where I can put in my focus for the month, but then it also has a weekly view where I get to every day can say, what's my focus for the day? Uh, Keep a personal to-do list, write down what's the week's focus. It's such a great way to stay organized. It also has monthly reflections, so I can actually reflect on the month that I've had and just really keep track of what I'm learning each month, how far I've progressed on my goals, and what am I trying to do the following months. So I definitely love it. I won't say that it's the best planner out there because I know that there's thousands of planners out there and I haven't tried them all. So if you know of a planner that does something similar, uh, feel free to tell me about it. I would love to hear about it because I'm always looking for planners that can do more and help me stay more organized. But yeah, so like what I said, I keep this planner on my desk every day, uh, Monday through Friday at my full-time job. And then on the weekends, I bring it home. But it just helps me look at it and just say to myself, okay, what am I trying to accomplish this week or this month or even to this day? And I write down everything in here. I will say it is called my passion planner. So I only write down things about my passion in here. Not that I'm not passionate about work, but my work has a separate planner, which is my phone, which is my Microsoft Outlook and all my meetings are in there. But the the good thing about this passion planner is that there actually is a column called work to do list. And while I don't use this passion planner to keep track of my work uh, tasks and meetings and what I need to do, I do keep a running list of projects that I'm working on. And I do this because I actually get really anxious about work and about even out my passion projects, I I sometimes get stressed out or overwhelmed. And so for me, writing it down helps me take it out of my brain and put it on paper, helps me just relieve that stress and anxiety. It also helps me keep a running list of 
things that I need to work on on Monday. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but on Friday when I leave work, there's a lot of things left on my plate undone. And then when I get to work on Monday, I forget what those are. But sometimes they continue to haunt me over the weekend. And so I write them down so that when it comes time on Monday, I know what I need to get started on. So that's called a passion planner and that helps me stay organized. So the third tip is being organized. I have a really hard time staying organized. I won't lie. I have struggled with organization because a lot of times I think I can remember things in my head, but I don't remember anything that I'd say that I'm going to remember in my head. And so I have to write it down. The other problem I make though is I write it down on any piece of paper I can find and then I forget that I wrote it down on that piece of paper. What I've started to do is I've started buying these sticky notes. They're four by six sticky notes. They come in different colors and they're lined. And I literally take a sticky note and I put it on my computer on Monday morning. And at work, I have a laptop. So I carry the laptop around with me all day. And then at night after work, I still have a laptop. So I still just have a sticky list. And I just keep a running list of everything that I need to do or accomplish. Um, And it really helps me just stay organized. And I always know where this list is. If if you want to know more about these post-it notes that I use, I really love them. You can go to Funny Brown girl.com forward slash post it p-o-s-t-i-t funnybrowngirl.com post it and I'll put these in the show notes but I love these um and it's really it's not that expensive you can get a pack of three a hundred count uh and I think it's like seven or eight dollars so I buy those and now the thing is is I have this running list of items that I need to accomplish. And the part that stresses me out is when I look at a list like that and I'm like, oh my God, the whole piece of paper is full. Like, where do I even start? So this is where I actually will go on the list and like write down what day I'm going to do things on, which things can I get done on Monday, Tuesday, etc. And try not to overload yourself because the thing is, is that sometimes we try to do too much and then we burn out. I also keep a calendar. I keep a Google calendar on my phone, which I love. The best thing about Google calendar is that you can keep different calendars within Google calendars. And so you can color code what you need to get done. So I have three calendars in my Google calendar. One is for show appearances and speaking engagements so that I know what days I have shows on at first glance when I just look at my calendar. Two is my personal stuff. And then three is a shared calendar that I have with my boyfriend so that we can keep tabs on each other in the sense of, If I'm traveling somewhere or I'm not going to be home like and he forgets, at least it's in the calendar and we can both see it. The fourth tip that I have is prioritization. So I kind of touched on this in organization. Once I write down my to-do list, I prioritize what is important by day. So I'll write down what day I'm going to do something on. But I also prioritize my day by morning, afternoon, and evening because I know that I am most productive in the late morning and not as productive late at night. So I will make sure that I do things that are really difficult on my brain. So like creating a PowerPoint deck or doing an Excel worksheet in the morning, but I'll do social media media at night. And I love doing social media at night because it's such an easy task to do that 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night when I'm ready to wind down, I can turn on the TV, pour myself a glass of wine, and I can still do my social media at the same time. So look for ways to get keep doing things and getting things done, even though you're relaxing or you're starting to wind down for the night. Like prioritize your to-do list by how do you work best. So for example, a lot of people were like, Shireen, you should start going to the gym in the morning. It'll really help prioritize your day because then when you get home from work, you'll have all this time to work on your passion projects and you won't be so rushed when you're trying to get to a show. So I tried, I tried to get up before work and I go to the gym, but that didn't work for me, y'all. That did not work for me. By three, four o'clock in the afternoon, I was so tired. I could barely keep my eyes open. When I got home at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, all I wanted to do was go to sleep. And so I realized like organizing and prioritizing my life around going to the gym in the morning was not for me. For me, going to the gym after work works better because when I leave work at 6.37, I can go to the gym, de-stress, it gives me a nice break in my day, make dinner, and then I can start my second day or like my second part of my day working on my own products and my own self, which is amazing because it's I've had this break in my day. So find out what works for you when you're prioritizing. I also prioritize my week by knowing what on a high level is each day going to be focused on. So what do I mean by this? So like Monday and Wednesdays is podcasting. Monday and Wednesday after work is what all I do is spend time on my podcast. Tuesdays is all about me. Tuesdays is about getting a massage, a pedicure, just focusing on me, whether even bills, just making sure everything that I need is under control. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is all about doing comedy, writing comedy, reaching out to bookers, hanging out with friends and family. 
So I know from a high level how I'm going to spend each day. Now, of course, if I finish all the tasks for that day, in that day, I'll still go and do something else. It's not like I'm going to say, oh my God, I finished everything, I'm done. I also want to stress from the work-life balance episode, something I said in that was communicate. Communicate what is working for you and communicate what's not working for you for the people you love so that you don't upset anyone, that you don't come across selfish or like you don't care. So let me give you an example. My parents live down the street and my parents, my mom loves to have me over for dinner. And there was a point where she wanted me to come over multiple times a week to have dinner. And we had to have a conversation where it was like, I can't come over that many times because it's not just dinner that I'm coming over for. I come over for dinner. That's about an hour. Then we sit and chat. That's another hour. Then we start watching TV. That's another hour. And before I know it, I've lost my entire evening of trying to get stuff done. So now I have dinner with them once a week. And even then, sometimes that doesn't even work. And I'll have to tell them like, hey, I'm not blowing you off, but something came up and I'm just swamped and I can't come over this Sunday to have dinner with you. So communicate what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And tip number five, reward yourself. You are working so hard to get to your goals, to be a creative, to win, to flex your creative muscle. Reward yourself. I'll do work in sprints. So if you've never heard of a sprint, it's like where you do something for 15, 20, 30 minutes, and then you reward yourself. So if I do a sprint for say an hour and I just work the whole hour without distraction, I might say, okay, I'm going to watch an episode of a TV show. Like I haven't caught up on Insecure. I'm going to watch a 30 minute episode of Insecure, or I'm going to check my Instagram or my Facebook, but put a limit on it. Don't allow yourself to get sucked in. Don't, don't do a 20 minute sprint and then spend an hour on Instagram. Sometimes I'll reward myself by taking a nap. I'll say I finished everything on my to-do list that I can get done today or by this time. So I'm going to go take a nap. Reward yourself for everything that you've done, for everything that you've accomplished. And don't sweat it if once in a while you don't want to do anything. For example, Sunday night, I binged watch The Sinners. I think that's what it's called. The Netflix show with Jessica Biel. There's eight episodes. I literally sat there and binge watched eight hours of TV because I just needed time to just decompress and relax. And while I was sitting there, I had my notebook and I had my journal and I was jotting down things that I wanted to accomplish and get done. Was that being lazy? I don't think so because I was still actually doing something. I was still doing something to move my goals forward. And so that's all that really matters to me is as long as you're moving your goals forward, take it easy on yourself and relax and just take it one day at a time. So to recap, the five tips for time management One, be passionate about what you're trying to spend your time on. Two, set goals, daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals. Know what you want to do. Again, I use a passion planner, funnybrowngirl.com passion planner. Again, I didn't make this passion planner. This is on Amazon. I'm just giving you an easy link so that you can find it. Number three, stay organized. It's a really hard thing to figure out what works best for you to stay organized. But once you find it, it'll make your life easier. Again, it took me a really long time to start using sticky notes. I realized that I'm just old school and I just need to see it written down on paper. So I use these post-its. Again, it's at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash post-it. Number four, prioritize. Prioritize your to-do list so you don't stress yourself out. Know when you're going to work on something. Set yourself a weekly schedule. Know what you're going to do on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesday, etc. Finally, number five, reward yourself. Thank yourself for all the hard work you're putting into getting to your goals, to achieving what you're trying to achieve. It's not an easy task and not everybody's out there hustling like you are. So reward yourself for all the hard work that you've taken and done for yourself. And with that, I'm going to say, now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Hey, before you hit pause, did you find this episode helpful and enjoyable? If so, could you leave an Apple podcast, aka iTunes review? It'll take you less than one minute and mean the world to me. The more ratings and reviews the show gets, the more people are able to find this podcast. If you're unsure how to leave a review, no worries. If you're on your iPhone or iPad, go to the homepage of this show and scroll down to write a review. Click on it and you'll be able to rate and review the show. If you're on a Mac from iTunes, go to the show homepage and on the top, click ratings and reviews. Also, please subscribe to get the latest episodes once they drop. If you enjoy the episode and know someone who would love it, please share. From your iPhone, click on the icon with three dots and then share via social media, email or text. 
If you want to hear more, head over to funnybrowngirl.com forward slash podcast. You can also find me online. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Funny Brown Girl. Also, sign up for my free newsletter for more tips to advance your creative journey at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And again, if you enjoyed the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Thank you for listening. See you next week. <laughs>